Hello, hello, hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with my WWE Money in the Bank pay-per-view review for the Saturday evening, June the 29th, 2014, from Boston, Massachusetts tonight. Now, as you see by our subtitle, of course, we have, of course, the Mr. Money in the Bank crowned. And, of course, a new champion was crowned tonight. That, of course, everybody has an opinion on, including me. And I'll get you my opinion on New Champ and why I think he should have won it, even though I wanted anybody else to win but this person that's subtitled. But despite him being the champ again, you cannot take away the fact. Because a lot of people are going to say, Oh, this pay per view sucked because he won. People are going to see past the three great matches we had tonight. A great tag team title match. One of the best tag team title matches I've seen in a while. The best Divas match, period, I've seen in a while. And probably a great, epic, mind to make contract match. You know, we both think matches were great. The rest of the card, you know, was filler. You know, the main event, you know, there's an analogy I use. And it would like me people would agree. That when there's two Money in the Bank ladder type matches, there's always one match that outshines the other. In this case, the contract match outshined the title match. So, uh, there you go. Uh, overall pay per view review. Rating 7.0 out of 10. It's all on the strength of those three great matches. And the rest of the card, even though they weren't as good as those three matches, they were still a very fun pay per view. And despite the Coleman event. <laughs> But, this, but the reason why it was Colmain, I'll get to why I think that was the Colmain when I get to it. Uh, first things first, we had, of course, our pre show. Uh, this is the first pre. There was, uh, there was a lot of firsts on the pre show tonight. Uh, the first pre show without Josh Matthews, of course, for those who haven't heard, Josh Matthews in the WWE firing spree, they still saved Eva Marie's job and Cameron's job. However, Josh Matthews, who's been lord of WWE since being on Tough Enough, got fired over the weekend. And uh, uh, Miss Renee Young took over as host this week for the show. She also probably will host the wall pre and post show as well, taking Josh's job. And I think Josh was a loyal employee. He was a great interviewer. And it'll be interesting to see how Renee. And I like Renee. She's cute. You know. And another first. This was the first. Pay-per-view pre-show without a match. We, we didn't have a match tonight. Instead, we had Daniel Bryan, the former WWE World Red Champion, coming out to express his situations about his neck injury. Now, he said he may require another surgery. Now, I don't know if it's a storyline to make people think he's going to be out longer or whatever. It looks like D-Bryan may be out for a while. I heard he, he will not be able to make it for SummerSlam. Maybe Survivor Series. Maybe my prediction when it comes to D-Bryan. The oldest I think will come back is Survivor Series. The latest Royal Rumble. That's my theory. And then we had Bo Dallas coming out. Very interesting segment. That could begin a feud when D-Bryan comes back. He could feud against Bo Dallas. Because I don't think when Daniel Bryan comes back, he'll be thrusted into the world title picture again. I want him to. But knowing WWE, they're probably going to bury his ass until he comes back. I can do it to somebody else. So now, anyway. Uh... So, D by an interest in seven bull Dallas potential for what's to come. Now, on to the main card. In my mind, uh, this is probably the best two matches, the best opening two matches, the best back to back, the best opening two matches of a pay per view in a while. Like, the first two matches were just a great one two punch. Two back to back title matches, which I said in the beginning were great. The WWE Tag Team titles kicked us off. The Wyatts, Harper and Warren, with another new thing. A different thing than it was Monday with that version of He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. They had like, He's Got the Whole World acapella. And then they had like some other generic music. And of course, taking on the Usos. This match was just, I, you know, we've been seeing these guys feud for the last couple weeks. You know, getting involved in the Cena, Cena Bray Wyatt feud. And I've been thinking they're going to get a title match. They being the Wyatts. I thought they are going to get it at payback. But they got it tonight. And boy oh boy. This was just great. Great back and forth. Action. The Wyatts looked really good tonight. 
Um, when they first came in, I kind of criticized the Wyatt's wrestling ability. Like, they love to just beat around and just just punch and kick people. They're not agile, but they've surprised me within the last year, specifically Hopper. I've been saying it for the last couple weeks in my reviews, that Hopper's my favorite member of the Wyatt's besides Bray. He's very athletic. He surprised me. And he and Hopper, Hopper and Ward made a great tag team. They had great double teamwork. They isolated one of the oozes in the corner. That was, of course, the beginning of the match. It was just the last 10 minutes was just epic. Great high flying spots from both teams and near falls and counters and just sick spots. Which big, high, big high flying spots, especially coming from the Usos. And big flying spots from Hopper as well. Hopper, he's a flying fleek. For being a 300 pound guy, he can drop the. Dropkick like no other. Killer clotheslines as well. Didn't see another of those, but we saw a great big flying moves off the middle. And it was just a very intense. It was very physical and very intense. You know, near falls, you know, double. It was just great. We also had a great double suplex from the Us. Probably one of my favorite spots in the matchup was when the Usos double suplexed Warren off the top. That was a great. Spot that would set up the finish. After the double suplex to Harper's partner Warren, that would be the setup for not one but two splashes. One who saw would splash and then tag in the other one the double the, the, the splash, you know, back to back splashes that would set up the one, two, three victory for the Usos. We turn in a tag team goal. I thought tonight would be the Wyatt's night, but Usos have proved that it can go ooh so crazy like anybody else. But I think Wyatt's could win the tag team titles one day. Especially the way they just had a great chemistry together. These two teams had great chemistry together and great teamwork from Harper and Warren. They looked really good tonight. Despite losing, they had nothing to be ashamed of. Great effort from both teams. So, uh, th uh this is interesting here. Uh, 3.4 for this match. Probably my second favorite match of the night. Well, like I said, three. I can't really wait which match I liked more. It's tough. But I think this would be probably my number two favorite match of the night if I would wake. My number two favorite match would be this match overall. So great opener, great opener from the Usos and Wild Hits with Usos retaining rallying effort from both teams. Now, like I said, one two punch, probably the best two opening matches of a pay per view in a while. We have a second match Divas match, the Divas title. Page against Naomi. Now, if you don't watch my shows regularly, I review both WWE and Tina. I'm not biased for one company. I'm not a fanboy of one specific company. I review both shows equally and objectively, even though I kind of, if you see my reviews for Tina, I kind of log their back, their knockouts division better than the Divas division. Let me say this. If they mold the Divas division on, like, based the blueprints of a Diva on to Paige and Naomi, the Divas division would be better off with these two girls and, and carbon copies, because these two girls put on a great Divas match. I saw the NXT championship match involving uh, Charlotte and Natalia that kind of put faith back in WWE Divas wrestling. For me, that was a great Divas match. This match was great, too. Like I said, probably one of the best Divas matches I've seen. Great back and forth action for both these ladies. Naomi can wrestle. That's the point. But she can actually wrestle. And so can Paige. And I thought the match, it was like very back and forth, very good action for both these women. And I thought the match was kind of spoiled for me. As this match was really getting going. There was a botched suplex from Paige and Cameron. And I thought the match was going to be fucked after that because it looked like Paige might have got injured during that botch. But, despite limping a little, they went on with the match. Great counters, great near falls, great action for both these women, especially after that botch. They recovered quite nicely. I'll give them credit for that. You know, I thought that after that botch, I thought it was over after that. But Paige persevered, and I thought Cameron was going to get involved. Now, I predicted my wall review that Cameron was going to screw over Naomi. I think a lot of people saw that was probably going to happen. Not just me, a lot of people thought. But I was happy for two reasons. At least we had a clean winner, because Naomi didn't interfere. That's the only positive about this. At least it ended clean with, of course, Paige 
I think Paige did try a submission move, and I think great counter from Cameron as well, to her own submission move. But then Paige got her own little move, of course, the Paige Turner got the victory after uh, Naomi was going for the DDT move, and of course, counter by Paige with the Paige Turner, and a 1 2 3 victory for Paige. We in the championship, like I said, cleanly. Unlike what many people, including me, like I said, expected, Naomi to get screwed over by Cameron. I thought Cameron was going to do that after the match, but it didn't happen. Maybe we're saving that for another time. Maybe we want tomorrow night. Anyway, 3.3 out of 5 for the Divas title match. Like I said, probably one of the best Divas matches I've seen in a while. You know what I mean? The last two Divas matches I've seen, like Charlotte and Natalia for the NXT Women's Championship, that was a great match as well. In this match, we deem faith that nobody can actually have a great Divas division if they get if they focus. I've been saying this a lot about WWE. They focus more on looks than brawn. If they get more athletic Divas in the mold of Paige and Cameron, partner Naomi, we could have a great Divas division. You know, especially when they bring in Charlotte. That would be very great. They bring in great athletic people like Charlotte coming in. And I think Paige should get more push than she does. Like a lot of, she's not getting a lot of applause, but I think Paige should get more applause, especially for that performance tonight, especially after that botch and recovering quite nicely from it. And Naomi was good too. Seriously. Naomi had a great effort tonight. Great effort for Naomi. She looked really good tonight. Like the Usos, I mean like the Wyatts in the tag team title match, Naomi, despite the loser, she looked really good like the Wyatts did in the match against the Usos. So then after that Opening salvo, one two opening salvo. We go from that to silliness. On this day, June the twenty ninth, two thousand fourteen, the great Paul Revere came to the Boston TD Garden to yell, "The burying is coming! The burying is coming!" Of course, trying to keep my wet button on a low, Damien Sandow as Paul Revere. Now. <laughs> Also, if you've been seeing my reviews, an active watcher of my wall reviews, you've been hearing me every week bitch about Sandow's position. But as I said last week on my wall review, that keep on burying Sandow. I said, keep on burying Sandow, WWE. Keep making him go along with the act. Because one day, he's going to tell you a new asshole. He's going to drop a pipe bomb on you a la punk. He took on Winnie Monka. Winnie Monka. I mean, uh... Adam Wells, of course, if you haven't watched my, because I mentioned him in my wall review as well, he does look like really, like he had a top hat and the glasses are kind of like Johnny Depp's really Wonka. Now, it's kind of weird to see this match happen again, because Adam Wells, in his first match on wall, his debut match, was against Sandow, and he won. And that's when I was really pissed, I was really amped. But my attitude has changed, because this is the best I've seen Sandow look in months. He wasn't easily squashed tonight. Yes, he lost again, but it wasn't in 30 seconds. He actually had time to shine here. And like I said last week, he, I think he's embracing it. He was always being stuck with a bad situation. To kind of paraphrase Adam Wells' stance on don't be a lemon, be a rosebud. When you have lemons, you make lemonade. That's what I think Sandow's doing. He's making lemonade out of this bad situation. You know, his bad situation could, could do for could do good for him because he's actually getting over with the fans. You know, got a lot of heat on him, making a public stance. And I guess he looked really good tonight, and he wasn't easily squashed. Of course, he dropped the elbow of the stain, or as he called. I like I did like this spot when he said when he was dropping the elbow of the stain, he's you know, still in the part with you, he said, The elbow is coming. I will give him ingenuity for that. Once again, like I said, going along with the ad. And then he tried to go for a big splash move, but then Adam Wills ducked out of the way, set up the pounty foul in the victory for Adam Wills. A uh, 2.0 out of 5 for that matchup. You know, I, I like Adam Wills' character. You know, the people are singing his song, you know, uh, 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 you know, he, you know he's, he's a comedy character. We'll see how he goes. But, uh, like I said, setting down these. In my mind, send out the zone to be in the money in the bank match. Then to be stuck in the mid card. They should have at least have send that replace Bad News Barrett in the money in the bank contract match. And speaking of that contract match, 
we would see that contract match be on, and they never replaced Barrett. Ray Barrett got injured on SmackDown. Now, this is the second time that Ray Barrett was supposed to be in a Money Bank match, and he got injured before it. Now, it was a couple of years ago that there was a WrestleMania. I forgot what WrestleMania it was. I think it was, I think it was like WrestleMania 28. That they were supposed to have Money in the Bank, and it was rumored that Ray Barrett was supposed to win, and then he got injured before it, and Money in the Bank never happened that year. And after that, there was no more Money in the Banks at WrestleMania's again. So, bad news bag, maybe bad luck, Barrett. <laughs> BLB instead of BNB. But anyway, with bad news Barrett out, no replacement, we were stuck with six competitors for the Money in the Bank contract match with Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, who are the whole story. It started with them, it ended with them. We, of course, would have also Paul VD, who was, uh, and I call him the Energizer Bunny. He kept getting up, man. And he returned to last year's Money in the Bank. So it's kind of see him, cool to see him back in this pay-per-view again. Uh, Kofi Kingston, another big highlight wheel, yet again, from Kofi. Uh, Dolph Ziggler, and Jack Swagger. Now, I said in the beginning, and I think everybody agrees with me on this, when there's a Money in the Bank match, when there used to be two briefcase matches, when there was a WWE World Heavyweight Championship separately, and there was a WWE briefcase and a World Title briefcase match, there was always one match that always outshined the other. In tonight's sake, like I said in the beginning, the contract match outshined the title match because you had guys who were very athletic and can deliver some high spots. Boy, oh boy, was that a spot fest or what? Great spot fest. You know, great, exciting action. And like I said, I think we all know, we knew, we knew in our hearts that Wallens and Ambrose were going to duke it out. And that's what happened. They started out right away. They fought to the back. And there were some great spots, like uh, Kofi Kingston, once again, proving why he should be a champion one day if he can get rid of his gimmick. Instead of being a generic babyface, he needs to break free and be healed. If he's here, he can really break out and be a star. Finally, look at Seth Rollins. Anyway, Kofi and Jack Swagger were on the top of the ladder. And then he got pushed off the ladder by Swagger, but then he jumped on, like, he was, here's the rope, and here's Kofi. Kofi fell off the ladder, jumped on the rope, then did his springboard move. That was a great fun spot. But the spot of the night belonged to Rollins and Ambrose. Now, one of the best spots was, uh, probably the spot that everyone's going to be talking about, was Ambrose superplexing Wallens off the top of the ladder in that flip you saw Wallens or uh, Ambrose do and made it like as they landed Ambrose did like a 360 flip as he landed on the superplex to Wallens that was a sick sick spot involving those two we also saw another move I think Swagger was going off a ladder and he got caught in midair by a DDT from Ambrose and then that spot led towards Ambrose being taken out of the match for a while because of his arm. His arm was injured. So he got taken out temporarily with his arm hurting. And I think we all expected Wallen to, you know, have a little altercation with Ambrose again. But all the other guys had a great... Despite Ambrose and Wallen's being the main focus, with Ambrose out for a while, at least it gave the other guys a chance to shine. Like I said, RVD, I call him the Energizer Bunny. Like, usually I had it kept getting up. When other guys were down, RVD was up. And he had some great spots, too. Great five-star up the top of a ladder. He can still perform. You know, even though he's, he's... He's what I like to call a utility player. He's off... He's out to get people over. He's out to get younger people over. Hello, he was just on NXT against the NXT champion. Adrian Ever. Getting him over. You know what I mean? RVD's a guy who will let people get over him. Unlike some people. Cena. Anyway. Um. So, like I said, and, and Ziggler, God, Ziggler got some great pop. But I think the Boston crowd was really vocal towards Ambrose being the winner. Because we saw Wallace climb that ladder. And he was getting that briefcase and then Ambrose came back and the crowd popped big time for when Ambrose came back and just brawling got 
well up the top of the ladder. And the crowd really the Boston crowd was decent tonight, but they were really hyped during this match. Especially when Ambrose came back and they get big massive pop when Ambrose came back. But as Ambrose knocked Mullins off, I was like, Ambrose is getting on the ladder here. Something screwy is gonna go down, someone's gonna come out. And that someone did come out. That someone was clean. Of course, Ambrose being a thorny authority side. Of course, the authority probably saw the storyline backstage. Kane. Ambrose is getting the briefcase. Sick him. Sick Kane on him. So Kane came out, attacked Ambrose to the fans' dismay, and choke slammed and tombstoned Ambrose. And with everybody else laid out, so I got some decent spots too, by the way. Uh, that gave Rollins an opportunity with no one left, especially Ambrose. Climb the ladder. Kane held a ladder for him. Now, I predicted that Wilds was going to win this match. I kind of should have thought that he was going to win this way, but I just didn't really see it. But he won the match. He won the briefcase. He is now the new Mr. Money in the Bank. Now, I know a lot of people would have loved to have seen Ambrose win it. And I think Ambrose may be a champ one day. And I've been saying it for the last couple weeks in my reviews. So I am cheap plugging my reviews, but I'm just saying. I make, I've been making these points in my reviews about the, about the Shield benefiting from the breakup. That Ambos has never been any better. He's been better on it. He delivered a great, another great promo tonight. Briefcase or face? He did try to get both. He did knock Wallace's well, face with the ladder. But failed to get the briefcase after King got involved. Uh, 3.5 out of 5. Probably the best match of the night. Full of spots. Despite the ending, you know, it came coming in, but I knew Wilds was, I, I knew that Wilds was going to win, especially with the authority helping him out, with Kane did. That's what makes a heel great heel. Win by any cost. Cheat, cheat if you have to, but win at any cost. And that's what Wilds did. And I, and I think Wilds is going to really benefit. And I hope that Sandow's ghost don't haunt. Well, I hope Wilds, uh, fit, like, Wilds does cash in. It becomes champion, unlike, like I said, we've said now. Cashing in and not winning the championship. And, spoiler alert, because with this situation, I thought, okay, with the briefcase match and the title match in the same night, that gives an open opportunity for maybe the briefcase being cashed in on tonight. Spoiler alert, it wasn't, as we all know. So, like I said, this Ambrose wallet, like I said, started with them brawling and ended with them. Being the last two guys to fight to get that briefcase. And this feud's not over yet, especially now with, you know, Wallace being Mr. Money in the Bank now. So we'll see how this feud intensifies, especially the great spots they had tonight. Because they need a proper one on one match. I thought that was going to happen tonight, but they were in this matchup tonight, giving more heat and more hype to their feud. And probably a one on one match might be imminent for probably Battleground. Now, on to our next matchup, all the filler matches that get prepared for the title match. We would continue on with Y Maxwell with Go Book. I mean, Y Back. Is it just me, or has Curtis Axel got new trunks now? He's got, you know, with the, the straps like Y Maxwell, or more like his grandfather, Larry the Axe Henny. Speaking of guys with a new outfit, or in this case, a new persona, their opponents. <laughs> Imagine this with a star on it. <gasps> star dust and gold dust. Now, you've seen a lot of feuds that just seem to never end. Or at least the three and B Los Manadores feud is over for various and obvious reasons. But it's right back, so gold dust slash Cody Rhodes slash go star dust feud. You know it's gone off for a while. It's a very, it's been a very entertaining one. And I think my back was really. I've been saying this also for months. My reviews. I think my back so has really gelled well as a tag team. The feud against Goldie wasn't gold dust. It's been really good because of the fact it's added tension with these two guys. And of course, Goldie was now going to a new persona as Stardust. Now a lot of big pops for him. Well, when you go on after a great Mind Bank ladder match, you know, with the crowd really popping for Ambrose and they're being stunned, that's like going on after the Undertaker lost to Brock Lesnar. You know, the crowd would be dead. You know, but it wasn't like to that. I'm just, it, it was almost like that, you know, like because the air was sucked down because people wanted Ambrose to win. Like I said, the crowd popped when Ambrose came back, 
And it, it was sucked out of the movie well and one, especially the way he did with Kane helping. So going on after that match, you know, bad situation for these two guys, but they handled it. But right back, so really, once again, showing why they're a great tag team. They have been a good tag team. But like they did on Wall doing Stardust, it was like the Wall match, but longer. With Stardust getting the victory for his team, but coming up the hot tag and delivering the Crossroads. What are they going to call it now? Now that he's Stardust, what are they going to call it? Cross Stardust? Instead of Crossroads? Cross Starworlds? Who knows what they're going to call it now? Since Cody's now the Stardust persona. Goldust is denying that his brother is Stardust, but I bet you that's how they're doing it. That one day, Cody Rhodes will turn on Goldust saying that I'm Stardust, blah, blah, blah. Well, after Stardust, after the roll up, they got the victory. He didn't try to, he didn't nail Stardust, the crossroads, but that didn't get the pin. The roll up did. And then my backs would beat him up after the match. But then a double team move from Stardust and Goldust would end the post match attack. Uh, 2.0 for that match as well. This match was kind of like a war rematch and a payback rematch. Speaking of payback rematches, on to another one. Rusev and Big E. Now, Rusev I've been criticizing, but everybody's been criticized about the fact, you know, he's you know squashing people left and right and a lot of being hot. But he's Actually, ever since the Battle Royal to determine the seventh or should I say the sixth entrant in the Miami Bank title match, he's really looked good lately. His match against Big E at Payback wasn't that bad, and his match was kind of like a carbon copy of that match. And uh, it was still a fun match, though. Interesting matchup. It was okay, you know. Like I said, it was fill up to fill in the blanks, or as we call them, bathroom breaks, especially the Coleman. Um, Biggie trying to go over that big spear off the top rope again, which he did. Now, and trying to go for his big moves, including big ending. But of course, would be fed towards the accolade. And he tried to break it. He tried to break out of the accolade, but he never did. He had to tap out again to it. And then Lana did another scathing promo again about the USA, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, and she said Putin was watching. She's serious. Well, she's saying that for storyline sync. Anyway, Rusev wins another 2.0 for me. I think the filler matches will get 2.0s for me. Well, besides this one. <laughs> On to the next matchup, our co-main event. Now, like I said, the match, like I said, Rusev and Biggie was okay. You know, some decent action. The feuds okay. Like I said, the co-main. Now, you had two main event. You had two. Let's say. Let's say there was two ladder matches tonight, with one outshining the other. In the Divas match, that same analogy was used for the two Divas matches. That one Divas match clearly outshined the other. For every match like a Naomi Page match that brings hope about the future of the Divas division back up, there's a match like this that brings it back. That That's like, when they step, like, like the Paul Abdul song, our best sets of track says, when Dari takes two, step, two steps forward with Naomi and Paige, they take two steps back with Summer Rae and Layla. This was a total clusterfuck. The only reason. Now, a lot of people are going to question this should be a pre-show match, which I thought it was going to be. And it, why was it a call main? Well, the reason why it was a cool main, in my mind, it's because of the fact they needed a bathroom break. They knew the main event was coming. They needed something to put in a cool main, a match that people can go to the bathroom to and not miss the main event and kind of a uh, non, non-wink-wink add more promotion for the company's network to make people watch the match they missed. But they missed nothing. This match kind of reminded me of the Terry Cat versus the Cat Cat fight at WrestleMania. Stupid, mostly a fucking cat fight. It was really a cat fight with a referee that was flirting with everybody. But unlike Val Venus, the referee of that match, he wasn't in a relationship with at least one or both of the women, which was Fondango's case. 
I knew this was be a total clusterfuck. He was flirting with everybody. It, it was really a wrestling match. This should have been a wall, in my opinion. This was a fucking glorified cat fight with Layla getting the victory. And in some way, it was crying. Really? Save the crying for total divas. There's no crying in wrestling. Only in wrestling reality shows. 1.0. Worst match of the night. But, like I said, it served its purpose. A purposeful, purposely placed co main for a bathroom break so no one cannot leave. During our main event to finally crown the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And that will be a main event. The, the latter match for the title. Which would consist of John Cena, Wayne Yorton, a brother William, Sheamus, Zizawo, Kane, Bray Wyatt, and Roman Reigns. Now, like I said earlier, the contract match was better. Because you had better you had guys who can perform better high spots. This match was okay. Like I said, this title match was decent. Especially with who won. But uh it was okay. Like the first couple minutes was kinda slow going, you know. You know, there was teasing up other weapons. Like Wallens Wallens used a chair. I wish there was tables used. That was my only quip about both matches. There was no tables broken. Especially the Spanish announce table. We saw a tease in the main title match, but we didn't see an actual table being used. Uh, probably one of my favorite moments of the matchup, though, if there was anything favorite, was the standoff between Reigns and Cena. That was very impressive to see these two face off. And with the boos and yays and Cena getting his ass speared by Woman Reigns. Yay! <laughs> but, uh, it was a decent match. Like I said, the, the last 10 minutes with everyone delivering all their big finishers was like the best part of the matchup. When Bray delivered his sister Abigail, and then Reigns nailed a spear, and then Cesaro nailed the neutralizer, and then he got all KO'd midair, like he was going off the ladder, and all KO'd midair by Orton. And the authority was at ringside. And I was like, something's gonna happen. I thought they were gonna get involved in the match. Thank God they didn't. Especially if Kane being involved. And of course, Orton, two of their guys. Being in it, so I was kind of glad they didn't get involved. Especially, like I said, who won? And, uh, there was, a, like I said, there was a decent action, but like I said, that there wasn't a great amount of high spots like there was in the contract match. But it was okay match. It was decent action, like I said, the last five minutes were the best. Waynes was going to get off, get the, I think the people were high on Waynes when he but like I said on my wall review as well from last week, that whoever won it, well, if it was anybody else but Cena or Orton, the guy who would win it, if it was like Cesaro or Reigns, it would be like, it would be a tainted victory. Because the only reason why they would be champion is because D-Buy's out. You know what I mean? It would be a shallow victory for him because he deserved to win the championship in a different way. Not in a ladder match, after the current champion got injured. And that led to the pick. That who would win. After Wayne's got taken down. Owen would come in. And then Kane would come in and take Wayne's out of the equation. And then Owen would get f would by Cena. On the Kane. And that would enable Cena with everybody out. To climb the ladder. And grab the title belts. Now. Yes, John Cena is the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Winning the match in a ladder match, the match he lost, kind of, when he lost in a TLC match, in a unification match to begin with, against Orton at TLC. Now, although yes, like many other Cena hitters, um, it's that Super Cena got the victory, but it was the safe choice, you know, the pussy choice that Cena would win. But, like I said earlier, if there was anybody else, they would be burdened by the fact that their victory would be tainted. A shallow victory because they didn't earn it. Cena would be less burdened. That's why I think they went with Cena. It's the easy pick, the same pick, but it was because Cena would, would not be as burdened as if Roman Reigns would have won or Cesaro would have won. Like I said, one of those two would have won the championship. It would have not been, it would have not been a win-win for anybody because 
Like I said, these two guys will be labeled as paper champions, and the Reigns would not be as good as they should be. You know, like I said, Reigns and Cesaro will be champs one day, and they really showed they 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 were probably the work. If you would name anybody who was really stand down this matchup, probably Reigns and Cesaro. Great. They're probably the best two guys in the matchup. Like the MVPs in the matchup. For sure. But like I said, Cena won because he would feel last burdened. Like no one's gonna be like, Cena didn't deserve to win. Well, he didn't, but still. If Cesaro or like I said, if Cesaro or Roman Reigns, like I said, their reign would be forever tainted because of the fact that they would only be champion because D Bry is out. They don't deserve to win the championship that way. They, like I said, they will be champions one day, but they need a better way that would anoint them as the new guy, not just hand them the belt because the guy's out. Like they did a scene, like I said, Cena's less burdened. If it was anybody else, they'd be more burdened with the fact they'll be, you know, paper champions or labeled as such. Like I said, it, I guess it was, a, like I said, it was a slow pace. You mean, like I said, the power moves and the finish were better than the high spots, and that's what happened with this match. Instead of the big high spots, you had power spots like the big finishes, back to back to back. You know, with the spear and Sister Abigail, RKO, okay, oh, blah 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 blah. So, uh, there goes a very entertaining pay per view. I know, like I said, a lot of people are going to overlook this pay per view. That most people are going to say this pay per view was good, but I hate it because Cena lost. I mean, because Cena won. Well, I'm not going to look at it that way. You had very entertaining pay per view. Like I said, with three really good matches tonight. And the match was mostly filler, but entertaining filler to keep us entertained until at least the main event. By the way, the main event rating for me 3.0. It was a decent matchup, but it couldn't follow up the contract match. Like I said, it didn't need to. And these guys couldn't. Because these guys don't have the strength and the power and the agility to follow up that match with the high spots. That's what the contract match was for, the high spots. That is it. For the, for my Money in the Bank review for tonight. That is it. Thank you all very much for watching. With that in mind, y'all have been attacked by the review from Zach. See you later, everybody. Yeah.